In today's video, I'm gonna redesign a famous brand's landing page. This is Valvoline. You might've heard of them before. They are a automotive and industrial solutions company. And I'm gonna take this landing page, deconstruct it and redesign it and try to make it just a little bit better. Let's get started. So if we kind of work top to bottom here, looking at the nav bar first, the obvious thing is the logo is not an SVG. It's getting blurry the larger it's scaled. So we'll fix that. And we'll also remove the Valvoline text as you're using just the V on other pages of your website. And this applies a more minimalistic look. We'll also take that hamburger icon and blow it up to a larger size. So it's a little bit more noticeable and easier to select it on mobile. And here in Figma, my design tool of choice, I'll quickly throw that in an auto layout and we have our nav bar. And thus begins the chaos. As I was looking at this, there's a number of things that pop up next. Here's a quick look at the FigJam file when I was marking this up, trying to understand the rationale behind the site and how I can come up with a better solution. So here's what I came up with. First, we'll take this H1 at the top that's trademarked. You'd obviously want to use this, and we'll use this as the heading of the first section. But stay with me, Valvoline. We'll come back to the instant oil change. Next, we'll keep the services you can see, experts you can trust slogan as the paragraph below that heading. Then we'll take that instant oil change and use that as the primary call to action button, still directing users to your primary service. And of course, here's where we come to the next problem where this doesn't really stand out as a button. So we'll increase the vertical padding to make it look more like a button. And here's where the first stylistic choice comes in. We'll round those corners because everything's looking a little rectangular, which of course can make sites look a little dated, but also having everything so rectangular makes the button kind of blend in. You'll even see here with this text area having a little bit of corner radius, it pops out just a little bit more. And then we've come to the biggest stylistic choice here, which is changing the theme of the website to follow the 60, 30, 10 color rule. And to quickly explain that, I'll just throw in this blue rectangle as the next section. 60, 30, 10 is just the ratio of colors throughout your design. The first color being 60%, the second 30, and the final is only 10%, which can be for call to action and links. And you'll see by the end of the video that my complete redesign reflects this 60, 30, 10 color ratio. And the reason why we use this in designs kind of explains itself. If we swamp back over to the other palette, you can clearly see this call to action just doesn't stand out the same and it's not as digestible to the user as this 60, 30, 10. Which if you haven't done so already, it's definitely worth learning the 60, 30, 10 principle. And speaking of learning, it is a new year, so why not start it off by learning something new on Skillshare, the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with classes ranging from various industries like film, illustration, design, and so, so much more. As someone who enjoys learning new things for like Japanese or the piano, I know one of the most difficult things can be the beginning when you're figuring out where you start. You can spend so much time trying to figure out how to start something instead of actually practicing that thing, which is where Skillshare's designed learning paths can take you from a novice to a pro and eliminate all of that hassle by following along with guided plan where each lesson builds off of one another to help you become proficient in that new skill. Like learning to program with JavaScript. It's been a while since I've developed anything by hand, so my JavaScript skills are less than ideal. And by Following this path, I can get proficient in JavaScript once again and probably know a little bit more than I did the first time. So if you want to get this new year started off by learning something new, I'll have a link for Skillshare at the top of the description. And the first 500 people to use that link will get a one month free trial. Thanks Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. I still want to include that Valvoline services button. So we'll throw that in the design as a secondary button. So now we have a clear distinction between the primary call to action, the secondary buttons, and later on, we'll have a tertiary option, which I'll keep in the same theme as this one, having kind of an arrow next to some text for that tertiary link. To finish off that top section, let's throw in an image. It's an image I found on your site that kind of matches the instant oil change and the fact that you can stay in your car for most of the Valvoline services. So I think it flows nicely with this first section. And then we'll throw some corner radius on that of 48 to match up with the design's current aesthetic. Next, we need to allow the user to find a store near them. You have this featured in the first section as well as in the third section, Valvoline Store Locator. So what we can do for mobile is simply fix a button here in the bottom right corner, which is easily accessible to the user's thumb for finding and setting your store location. And when you select that, of course, it'll open the store locator as an overlay so you can easily set and find your store. And for the desktop version, we could have a banner at the top similar to where this H1 used to be, letting the users set their location so it's always easily accessible on the screen no matter if they're on desktop or mobile. With that, I definitely feel like we have a better flow and an easier to digest landing page for the user. So now let's move on to the next section. The heading reads Valvoline Global Operations and you have some tertiary links to match, but then you have the Valvoline products here 
and a random image here. So I feel like we can split these into two separate sections to make the flow a little nicer. So we'll throw in the next heading as find the right Valvoline product. And we'll keep the next slogan once again as the paragraph as it matches pretty nicely with the product section. Then we'll have a primary button that takes you to the products page. And we'll highlight some of the products with a horizontal scroll section that the user can tap on and go to that individual product. For the third section, we'll have a heading which is Valvoline Global Operations. And we'll have a nice paragraph below that. Then finally, we'll add that tertiary button I was talking about, and we'll stretch that to the full width of page and throw a quick description about that page right below it. Then we'll separate the white space with a division line, creating basically a card section, and we'll repeat that three times like so. So if we look at the current design, the first two sections are in this nice light theme. They flow well together, but this third section, it's its own separate section. It's for global operations. So we wanna make sure we visually separate that. And I'm gonna do so by adding a background color to this. And we're gonna take a light blue and just put that in the background so that we get a little bit more color in the design. This blue being that 30% of the 60, 30, 10. And it also shows that nice visual separation of the section. And finally, we'll finish it off with a call to action for finding a store near you, just in case the user didn't see the pop-up in the bottom right. And it's possible if the user made it all the way down to the bottom of the page that they're probably interested in finding a store. So it's always good to have a call to action at the end. For the footer, I'll just copy this rectangle here and push it down a ways. And I'll just update it with the logo and copyright information up top. Pretty much everything stayed the same here. Just updated the spacing a little bit and cleaned it up. And then we added some space down here so that the find your store can dock away nicely when you get down to the bottom of the page. And we added a black color here. And here's a look at the current Valvoline.com. And here is the redesign. Some of the smaller tweaks that I didn't show throughout this process for those designers that want to see it. I didn't want to change much of the brand colors just because this is not a rebrand. However, I did change kind of the neutral palette from black to white. I added a little bit more blue in the grays and slightly adjusted them. And then here I created a lighter shade of the primary blue to use as the background so that it contrasts better with text on it. If I put them side by side, you can kind of see the changes here. So subtle with some of them you can barely tell, but they are adjusted slightly. And then for the typography changes, for the original Valvoline site, they use Barlow throughout with headings and paragraphs. And for the buttons, they swap it up to Passion 1, which I really don't like this font and I don't think it pairs well with Barlow. And these two fonts are Google fonts, by the way, just in case you guys wanna use them in your own designs. And then for my Valvoline redesign here on the right, I'm using enter for all body paragraphs and pretty much everything else. And for the headings, I'm using Pangram and Pangram's Fuji, which is a paid font, but I think it looks nice and bold and it pairs pretty well with enter. And a special thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and making it possible. Make sure you use the link in the description to get started learning on Skillshare. And don't forget the first 500 people get a one month free trial. Here's some more videos I think you'll like. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.